select board on Monday, June 26, 6.31 p.m. And bring up my agenda. <coughs> Just a reminder, the board is not meeting next Monday on the July 4th weekend. All right, approval of minutes. Um, we're going to do, there are two of them. We'll do them separately because they're not the same uh, constituency for each of these. So the June 19th meeting, which is the regular board meeting last Monday, I made a couple of changes uh, this afternoon. So one just changed forward to carry forward. You know, the fire, yeah. the fire department could, and the others were really inconsequential. Uh, any comments or okay, so my consensus? We're good with those minutes? Okay. The June 20 minutes uh, was the special meeting that we had last, uh, well, the 20th, <laughs> it looks like. Was it just the day after? Yes, I guess so, with Jody Thursday. and myself. So did you take, I wrote them, so I was okay with them. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay with them? <laughs> All right, so my consensus, those, those minutes are okay. We're going to do community input, then we're going to do a little agenda jumping. So, any community input? Okay. The meeting's in here. What's that? They're meeting in here if you're looking for the meeting. Selectman? Yes, yeah. right here. And we're just doing community input, so come, come up if you have some input. Something you'd like to ask us? Uh, yeah. so you can sit right there. Hi. Hi. I have a problem with this that came. Okay, I'm going to be contacting the governor's office. I, I tried to contact Avatar uh, concerning, you know, them coming to our house. Well, they don't answer the phone between noon and one. I work between eight and noon and 12.30 and five. They close at 4.30. So they're not accommodating the people who work from eight to five. So now I have that. I call that number. And it should be a place where when you call, someone answers the phone, and they don't. There's a message that says, we will get back to you. So you okay? call the DRA? What's that? That number right on there. And that's, that's the taxing authority. Yeah. It's because now they, because Avatar didn't come to my house, I'm being picked on there to come I, I, there personally. I don't think so. I think they're just doing a random. They well, do I, a, a I random. Okay, I've been here 20 years. I've had to do two abatements because they miscategorized my house. So I don't think so. I don't think it's that way. I think I feel assaulted. I'm sorry, but I do. I've been told that before I've had decks, which I don't. I have an elevated patio. It is ground. You can't tax ground. I have, I've been told my upstairs is bigger than it is. I have four foot knee walls. You can't tell that from the outside of the house. Four foot knee walls take 100 plus square feet off the size of my upstairs. So thereby I'm not categorized as a one and three quarter house. I'm categorized as a one and a half. But every time they do this re-upping, re they change it back to, to uh, something else. Because they never get into my house, because they never come at an accommodating time. And so they just look at it from the outside. And one guy told me when I discussed it with him on a previous occasion, well, the house looks bigger because it sticks out of the ground more. Well, that's not my problem. <laughs> I had, in fact, I had a person in your office here tell me that they can do whatever they please. They can assess you for wood floors and things like that when you don't have them because they don't see them. I don't have wood floors. That form you send out every, every year in April, that you're supposed to fill out if you've had anything done to your house. I fill it out meticulously every single year. I did, I've never touched my house since I moved in. I've been there 22 years. It's exactly the same with the changing of carpet and linoleum since I moved in. No additions, no finished basement, no changes. We're gonna, and, we need to read your name into the, okay. into the record. So it's Charles Cooper, Yes. One Dory Lane. Yes. And this is just so people know, the, the DRA, Department of Revenue Administration, whenever a town does a revaluation, the DRA does a, uh, an audit of the process done by our auditor, uh, by our assessors, in this case, Avatar. And so the DRA is in the uh, process 
of doing this audit and checking up on our assessors. So I understood it to be a, a random, maybe maybe it's not just random, but that well, was the problem is you're, you're guilty until proved innocent. They do whatever they please. If they can't, if they go to your house and they can't see inside, you get wood floors most of the time. My neighbor across the street, when he and I were discussing this last week because they didn't get into his house. Well, he has blinds on all four of his windows to a split level on the downstairs. You can't see in. They assessed him for having a finished basement. It's not finished. So how'd they figure that out? They just do as they please. And then they expect you to fight back, and the average person doesn't. Well, guess what? I am, because I'm sick of it. I am totally sick of it. I've applied for abatements. It takes them two, three, four months to do it, and then you don't get your money back. They say, oh, well, we'll take care. You, you have a lower tax the next time, but this time it stays the same. Well, that's not fair either. So they, they need to be accommodating, and towns need to fight back. You need to go, hey, look, we have people that work 8 to 5. I guess you need to have someone in your office work Saturdays. They do that in other places. Why can't, if I have to work, they expect me to take time off to, to, to be there when they decide to show up? Can't do that. It's not right. So, so Mr. Cooper, when, when you received notice from Avatar that they couldn't get into your property, you tried to call a separate appointment, there was no answer. Is that they don't answer the phone at noon time. This is the DRA. I understand. This is the DRA. I'm going back a couple of, he said a few things, I'm trying to... Right, but it's the DRA, it's not... It's the DRA now. Well, this is but, where the department says it was ran, your property is randomly selected. So this is from the state, not from us. So. Right. I understand that, but it's still not random. They, they know darn right well they didn't get in my house. And they're looking at it from the outside, and they're saying that my house is bigger than it is. I, I sat before. so. So we'd be happy to um, send DRA an email just voicing your concern about the number of hours and people who work during the day. Other than that, I don't know what recourse we have with the DRA. They're, they're wanting to do this audit and they've chosen... They don't answer the phone. That's the problem. They don't answer the phone. So they don't answer the phone, but it's supposed to be a place where you can call in and talk to them. You can, it's supposed to be a place where you can call in and set up an appointment. So this is from noon to one they're not answering? They're not answering the phone at any time. Yeah. They, you've got a message, okay? If you call there, I called at noon time today. You call in, you get a message that tells you, <coughs> leave a message, they'll call you back. They, and, they, and they said they check it daily. They didn't call me back today. They, did, they so didn't call me the back. Message I left the message, they didn't call me back. Where the problem lies is, where do they call me? I'm not home. My home phone is there. My cell phone doesn't work within the building. I had to go outside. So when are they going to call and talk to me? They need someone that answers the phone and listens, and they don't have that. And there's where the failure lies. I work in a restricted environment. The company I work for makes weapons. Okay? I'm not even supposed to be on my cell phone unless it's noontime and in the break room. I can't carry my phone around. Okay? I'm not supposed to be on the phone talking to people. I have lunch time, I can use my phone. Okay, I'm not supposed to be on phones, company policy. But most people do keep their phones on, but they don't work in the building. Because the, 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 the environment that we're in, the building is, security, they just don't work. I think your first instinct, Mr. Cooper, when you say you're going to call the governor's office makes sense because it's a state agency. That would be who you want to complain. Sorry, thank you. Do you, um, we'll, we'll check it with the DRA, I mean, it will send right. e email. But you should register but your complaint with the Department of Citizens, yeah. the Office of Citizen Services at the Governor's Office, to let them know that the State Department or Revenue Administration is not responding to you. I mean, yeah. you should do that. But that, the whole idea, it's basically you're guilty until you prove innocent. Well, just give them what you want. And we can deal with, on the yeah. avatar end, but I, there's nothing we can do about the State Department or Revenue yeah. Right. But this this is connected to that. Well, it's it's a it's an audit of the reval that the avatar is doing. So it's connected in, in that way. But I mean, we thought it was random. The card says it was random. That that's all. I, we can only tell yeah. you what we know. Is what we right. Well, they can say it's think. random, but find out who has cards and find out how many of those people they actually got into their house to look at it. And I'll bet you there's a match. Most likely. 
anything. Is there anything else? Uh, so I, I'm just questions. looking. I want to get a copy of my card. We can have Caroline send you that tomorrow if that's okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you have an email or do you want just uh, to? You can just mail it or you can send it by, well, you might as well just mail it. Sure. To the door, I, I need that to deal with them because I'm in the contact them because it's not, it's not right. It's bit, and as far as I'm concerned, it's bullying for taxes, really, in the end. Okay. I do have one other question. Uh, the sidewalks in our neighborhood over there? Doherty Lane. Right. The driveway portion of the sidewalk, I was just curious when you guys are going to repave those. We have, uh, uh, you mean the, the road itself? No, the driveway. The driveway. It's, you know, well, technically, uh, my driveway passes through the sidewalk. But supposedly that portion of my driveway that has to be the sidewalk is town property because it's right of way, town yeah. right of way yes. and it, it passes so it's it's kind of yours and mine. Yeah. Okay. So the question is what are we doing the sidewalks? Just my portion of the driveway that, that do you guys go around and look to see what damage the snow guy does? So when we when we repay we, we cut away. We do the cut ins, right? Cut when we repay. We cut in. So I, the question is when is Dory laying on the on the well, well, actually, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm kind of like trying to make a point here, because I've, I've had issues with a guy with a big, huge, funny loader, who's driven into my driveway to dump snow in my yard, and in doing so, he broke up my driveway. So, you know, you say they have a right of way and do what they want. Well, if they have a right to break up my driveway, I like to see it in writing. And I called him about it, and then uh, he, of course, was not happy with me. We had a, a heated discussion. Who, who he told me he could do whatever he wanted. The guy driving it. I mean, is this our road agent? Yes. Right Jeff, right. do you have anything to say about this? No. Um, Did you speak with him? Yes. Yeah, actually, I think the police department was involved in it. Is the police you were unaware of this? No, I, I recall what it uh, well, they called the police on me, and I didn't do anything. with the police, and okay. uh, the I, came in, so he's here now. Uh, they called the police on me, and I didn't do anything. Okay, they uh, they claimed I was blocking him from doing his job. I wasn't in the road, standing in the road in front of the truck. I just was standing there by the side of the road to flag him down, because we had a confrontation before where he drove into my driveway several times to dump piles of snow off the road. And when he did so, he broke up my driveway at the bottom. And it's still broken up. So there's my, there's, that's where my complaint lies. Is if it's my property, if the driveway is my property, someone shouldn't be driving a big, heavy front end loader full of snow up into it. He shouldn't be doing it. What is one door you said? So? Yes. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll explore this. We'll get back to you. And Doherty Lane is planned for 2025 along with my street. So basically what I'm, the only point I'm trying to make here is they shouldn't be driving the front end loaders up into people's front yards, basically, to dump snow. <clears throat> That's not right. If you're running a skid steer with a sidewalk, blow a side snow blower on it, I've never run a, a loader in anybody's yard. I didn't that say was, you did, sir. I'm just making it clear that yep. I run a skid steer with a snow blower attachment on it. Right. The reason I was out in the road uh, not, I'm sorry, not in the road, but the reason I flagged him down when he was coming by is because the snow, the guy that was doing this, the guy that was doing the sidewalk, uh, was blowing snow into people's driveways, blew, blew it into mine, trying to clear the sidewalk, which is counterproductive since the snow blower has a chute and can direct it into the yard versus back into somebody's driveway. And that's what I was pissed off about, excuse me, uh, that's what I was upset about because I'm out there removing snow. I'm 65 years old, and I don't mind removing it once with my snowblower, but I shouldn't have to remove it because someone blew it in my yard in front of my driveway with the snowblower. You have to accept it with the plow, but when the guy comes to do the sidewalks, after the fact, there's a directional, and they can aim it away from somebody's driveway or the street. Okay. We'll, we'll take a look at this and get back to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Have a nice evening.
Is there any other community input? Do you want us to address? Do you want us to address the? That'd be great. Denise, can you hold off? Um, did, did you come I'm to fine. talk to us about? I'm anything? fine. Go ahead. Okay. All right. We, we want to do something with the breath thing right now. No, that's fine. All right. So um, um, I just have to address the 15-year-old issue. So we said 16 plus for counselors. For counselors. So what's the what is the rationale or what is the well camp was started we had to let go of one because they didn't show for training a counselor um, yes so um, we're down a counselor so ratio is high right now camp is full completely full with a waiting list so oh. because we're down so we, we have seventy or seventy two seventy five seventy five so luckily they weren't away today so <laughs> felt like it. Um, so they have four applicants that are 15 and a half. They all turned 16 by October. So mm -hmm. I felt a little uncomfortable with it, mm -hmm. um, but I was there today, um, and I was there all, almost all day. I missed two hours, um, and they were doing a great job. The kids that were hired, kids, uh, the staff that was hired <laughs> is doing a great job. Um, Andy's right on top of it, Bert is right on top of it. Um, so, excellent. Um, I saw Kelly at noon time, she seemed in good spirits. Yes. Um, so, a lot of good feedback already. Um, that huge improvement already. Of course, there's issues, you know, with the school, they're renovating and stuff. Mm -hmm. But the 15 year old is the issue. Um, they have four applicants that they can interview and for part time. And they basis. have no one who's. 16 plus. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm in that's the that's the issue. So what can we what can, how can we help, I guess is the question. What are we offering the counselors? Uh, they range from seven twenty five <coughs> to eight to ten experience. So um, we can put a something out on the web our website again. Mm -hmm. If you want to write something or have mm -hmm. somebody from the rec committee write something, we put out an all call there. You know, sometimes kids' summer plans have changed, and maybe they're. Uh, I mean, we should at least try it. Yeah, I agree. Okay. And then um, to go into non-public later at the end um, to talk about um, staffing salaries. All right. So, so we do have a non-public. Scheduled for the end. Okay. Yes. If we're all right. Yes, we do. We have to have that. All right. All right. So, so you can, you know, formulate. Have somebody. Have him. Have have Andy. Have one of your committee formulate a, a little ad for the for the web. Okay. And see what happens. Uh, you can ask Caroline. I mean, Caroline would be more plugged into places that might be helpful. Yeah, yeah. I don't know either, have, have whoever's doing it, check in with Caroline, and, and uh, she can post it whatever three places she knows it's good at. Anything else with the rec committee? Um, I have purchase orders later, but. Okay, we can deal with them. Yeah. Yeah. Super. I just wanted to get this off. Okay, so we're back to community input. Denise? Nope, nope, you're out here. You're it. Okay, um, I'm looking to get temporary or just a okay from you guys. Um, Family Day is trying to raise some funds, and what I wanted to try is a um, outdoor movie night. And because um, I have to ask the fire chief if I can have electricity, but <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of getting your permission, then I'll ask him. But um, I'm looking to do it possibly in the ice rink area. And have um, you know a projection and outdoor movie night and just sell, it, sell popcorn and stuff for having. It would be free to watch the movie, but to maybe fundraise with the sodas and we'll have popcorn and is stuff this like instead that. Instead of fireworks. No, 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 no. This is trying to get us more. No, this is like in July, so we can raise some money to oh, have oh, more oh, things. Oh, this is a separate night. Kind of making it a, an announcement that Family Day is still active and oh, okay. and trying to you know create some new things to kind of get people excited by it. So we're, that's what we're looking at. So it's still in the. Where would you project a movie? Where? Yeah. In the ice rink. Under what? Well, uh, it's a portable projection. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. 
So, and it will be it will be kid friendly. Trust me. <laughs> They'll say, but we would have it facing the woods, not the road, mm -hmm. so there would no be no distraction. But it would, you know, people can sit on the grass or lawn chairs or whatever. We're just trying to get yeah, families so. involved as well as just kids. It's a nice idea. Well, it's yeah. a nice recreation I idea. Actually. Yeah. The, the fire chief if you have any objections. I don't think it's he in would. his yard, so. It would, and then we would uh, encourage people not to park at all in the fire station parking lot, of course. Right. I'm thinking, who would I have to ask about parking in like the cemetery road? Mark Kutcher, Mark Kutcher. One of the okay. trustees. Mark okay. is the one I know. I would touch Mike, base and just ask Michael people. Michael Point is another trustee. Okay. To stay away from the parking lot of the fire station. But um, so that's kind of what I was coming for. Well, let's for. just take an informal poll. I mean, I, I think it's a, it's a great idea. But obviously, we'll have to check with like the fire, yeah. the police, so that they're yep. you know, on board all that jazz. Absolutely. Yeah. I have no objections. But again, I want to hear from the. Right, our public the guy safety that's, uh, yeah. in charge of the, of the, of the physical plant. I like the idea. My worry is parking because we had baseball games there and it's hard to park. So, yeah. yeah, well, I don't know why people don't park like down the side of the side of the roads of the cemetery. It's not affecting, uh, not on the grass, obvious, but on the side of the roads. I don't see why if we encourage people to do that. And we um, ask for a, a police help that evening to new direct park of the line. I would certainly ask Mr. Kucher permission yes. as well but you know I think and of course I would never do it on a night that they have a ball game I'll have to find out what that schedule is you know when they it end should they should be done I, that's what I thought like in the middle of Jan, uh, July is what I was aiming for yep. so and if it works out really good maybe we'll have one in August you know so but that's you know it's just another way of getting our, our we're having a, a little hard time right now getting motivation okay. to get it going. All right. So I'm working on it. I'm trying right. hard, but um, we've sent out our letters for fireworks and we just have, uh, there are people are very busy, mm -hmm. uh, you so know, everyone who's have involved. Our, we have our $500 line, I'm quite sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I'll, you know, I just don't want to take anything until I know for sure that it's going to happen. But right. I, it's going to happen. It's just what's going to happen is the, the whole thing. We've got the Legion and, you know, we'll, we'll do something if we can't do the fireworks and, you know, we'll see. Right. But that's what we're, you know, we're working still towards having the whole, the whole thing. So, no objections? As long as no I don't get objections here, I mean, from place and fire? Case, but In my own case? Yeah. Thank you. That's all, right. all I needed. Thank you. Thanks. All right. We'll go to uh, department heads. Jeff? Welcome. Okay. A couple of join us tonight. Uh, 965 to RD Concrete. And it's to raise the existing pad five inches at the transfer station that the 40 yard container sit on. And there's actually two pads there. It comes out and kicks in. There's another patch with two panes. The 3750 has to be part of the transfer station renovation. Yes. This is, we'll make it fit somehow. All right, I'll let this over. I'll move to the top. I'll move first to number 965 to RD Concrete uh, for uh, fill for, for the concrete pad for $3,750. So this is, a, this is on top of the water? I'm right. This, Jeff. I, I think you mentioned this before, but I don't know. So where the recycling containers are up top. I say up top, but where all the combing and recycling goes, yeah. it's flat through there. They need pitch to elevate the water to shed okay. towards the We have talked about this, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, okay. I thought I had. Okay. I'm yeah, I'm looking at our project budget. I'm trying to remember the conversation. Yeah. Okay. I think he came in at 15000 uh, uh, Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. The same company, though. Whoops. Yes. Okay. We have time. Okay. So... I think that it, this comes close to being sufficient funds, and we'll, you know, if it isn't quite there, I mean, we'll, we'll take it from our operating budget. You know, unless you really want me to find it, I, I know I did something. I can't quite.
quick, you do a quick addition. I mean, the. Um, you can get the patch of 15, 5, and 37. It's just on the 20 grand. Right. But we added another thousand for the electrical. So I don't, I don't, I just don't have the figure. So either the board is comfortable with saying whatever overage uh, will be covered by, you know, the operating budget. Well, we were going to find uh, an expert on the last week, right? And we thought 32. we found it. Yeah, but we had an offset right now. Yes, we did. So, yeah, I mean, it. it Approximately 1500. I think we could find 30, we could probably find 15 minutes, so. Okay, I'm all right. Okay. I want to get this done. All right, so any other questions or comments? I will call a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Let's put down, this is the transfer station project. I don't think it's been given a number yet. I don't know number, because it would be small. Okay, very good, thank you. The second going to be 964 to Hardigan Services out of Vermont for catch basin cleaning for 2017. Uh, they came in at $115 an hour. Uh, the $3,500 is what our budget is. Okay, uh, next item is the Board of Selectmen Board of Selectmen meeting. Is that on the agenda? Yeah, that's on the agenda. Okay, that's on the agenda. Okay, that's on the agenda. Okay, for up to thirty-five hundred dollars. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Actually, I have a question. Is there any way to measure what gets cleaned or? I can give a rough estimate. You know, I'm just thinking of. Well, I'm thinking of for purposes of the MS4. Plan, yeah, that's why I assumed you were talking about. Yeah, they're looking for measurable things. You know, so. Either the we catch pull out X amount of yeah, or it was trouble is the clean catch basins with water. This many inches so, high, the crap, and now right. it's this many. I don't. You may want to find out from other towns how they how they manage. So they that. they wash out the right? Yeah. yeah, they need water to break it up. The UV is packed. Right. The salt packs to the bottom. Right. So they need it's a high pressure line they use. They don't suck the water back up though, right? Oh water. yeah, water everything. Yeah. Trucks aren't that big. What are they? Oh yeah, they have a whole entire ten or bones? No, no, they got to empty out two, three, four times. So let's How talk many about catch that basins? process. 136. It might be counterproductive to what you're trying to do. So where do they where do they dump that stuff? At the transfer station. Where? Out in the back. Back towards the garage. Yeah, all right. So then the water just over there. That's fine. Out in the field. I, you know, it, it's worth a question of other right. towns how they right. how they manage this. So I mean, it's a good point. If they were sucking out sewer basins, they dump at the you know, it's a sweat yeah, okay. Most of mine sand leaves, right, compost, right, right. sticks. Right. If this fills out. Um, purchase order number 960 to Econo Signs, and it's for two signs at Pinch Hill Road. For 148 dollars giant table on this I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, that's the giant table. It's the giant table, Dave. <laughs> Uh, we took some purchase order 962 Econo signs for two signs on Pitch Hill Road for $148.45. Second. So, I have a question. These signs are for what? Pinch Hill Road. Labels, Pinch Hill Road. Oh, a stop we, sign. Okay, so we need, this is just a replacement to get everything up to standards. No. Okay, any other questions or comments? All right, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Purchase order 962 to the city of Dover, and it was to change an oil pan out on the 2013 International uh, this past winter. The back side of the oil pan had a rust spot about the size of a half a dollar, and it eventually rusted through, and it's a problem that International has uh, for 1026 24 
Last but not least, uh, 961 to Chadwick Bay Ross for the sum of $955. Their series of issues that we had this winter keep in the back over. Sorry. We're all spent. to accept purchase to order 961 to Chadwick Bay Ross. A bill of various issues with Volvo backup. <laughs> $955. It's funny because the machine only has like 500 hours on so it. So, no, I know. This does this is bring us, are we current now then with all the work they did? Do we know? I I, I believe so. But we've had a bill. Is it in, well, how would you describe the working order? Well, right now we have no fuel gauge. Um, sometimes it starts, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it'll go and drive, sometimes it won't. Sometimes the four-wheel drive works, sometimes it don't. Okay. So I um, heard back from <clears throat> I I I heard back from John Dia they're gonna give us forty five grand for our machine plus fifty for, for one of theirs in case um there were thirty grand plus our machine. Uh, they're gonna give us forty five for ours. So forty five plus thirty grand to get rid of it. This was about the year before I came on, so what we yeah. that. So 2014. Mm -hmm. It's new. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. My point about the past is to say there's nothing to do. Oh, it's so not that old. It's only four years old. Five years old. Yeah, change the fuel gauge out. <clears throat> what is the bad design on there? So they got a module. It's actually under the cab of the Tobacco. So I said again, okay. To change the, the fuel module out, there, uh -huh. there, it um, shows you what you have for yeah. fuel yeah. works gauges. Yeah. Is actually under the cab of the machine, so they literally have to lift the cab up to change this module. Take it apart. At, yeah, it's like a two thousand dollar job. Mostly in labor to take it apart. It's all yeah, it's all labor. Yeah. Okay. Well, the question is, board, you know. You know, we nonetheless go to the end of this question. Whether we decide to pursue any kind of action after this is a, another discussion. Mm -hmm. So, perhaps well, we, need to, we need to keep our line of credit open with Chadwick Bear Ross. We have to pay that now, so. yeah. All right, so given that, I will call the question. Uh, hold on. Oh, yeah. I'm reading this, and they can replicate the problem. Sometimes. Yep. Sometimes. When they plug it in, it does nothing. But I have two other operators that it happens to besides myself. Yeah. They're saying, there's the radio, they're, they're like, we can't duplicate it. They must hit the mute button. Yeah. Yeah, they come in for half an hour, 40 minutes, and they try and solve all the issues that you have during a 35-hour storm. And I'm like, it doesn't happen that way. Like, you know, three guys are not going to sit there and lie and waste your time and energy. We don't even want to see you. Oh, this is a brand new machine. What are you thinking? I just... That's a lemon. That's a lemon. Yeah, and that's not Volvo's name. That's the, that's the ironic thing. Volvo is known for the backups. No, they're not. Yeah, they are. No, they're not. They stopped making them. They don't even make them no more. They made them for two years. They're done. They well, got out of them. You know, whoever, whoever did They make that. excavators. Their excavators and their loaders are, are a good machine, absolutely. Their backhoes are not known. 
Oh, did I say back home? I'm yeah. sorry. I'm that tired. I'm not an excavator. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> They're known for making heavy machines. Thank you. I'm tired. And they have had a good reputation in the past. So all yeah, I mean, it was a good, good vendor so, name. It had good references. So we, we need to, um, I'm sure we need to pay this bill, but then we need to figure out whether or not have a conversation with legal counsel and see what avenues are actually open to it. Yeah, I don't know. Does the state have 11 law? I'm used to it. Yeah, I don't know either. All right. We're going to spend more than asking. Well, you said we're up, we're up, we're up almost $30,000 in warranty work as of right now. How much? Well, we're close to thirty grand. We didn't pay that. In warranty work. In warranty work. Now, have now we're paying. Pay. Well, I would suggest, you know, you could have a conversation with the CIP committee, which we'll be meeting soon, and and see what the CIP committee might have to to say. I don't know. Is the board ready to call? So I don't have $50,000 for that in the schedule. Okay, well, thank you. Go ahead. But we can talk about it. All right, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor of purchase order uh, 961 for $955, please say yes. Aye. 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 if you're uh, scheduling your vacation time from 819 to September 1. Yep. So our question is, what? how will the projects that are going to be ongoing, how do you make, expect the transfer station is starting after July 4th, as of right now. That will be out of the way. Um, the only thing we'll have to do is the culverts, um, which we work. I can schedule that around um, things. Catch basins for these catch basins. Basin. So I'm hoping to schedule in the next week yeah. or two. And the roadside, are you doing roadside mowing? Yep. Um, anybody in purchase order for tonight because he's, he's backed up uh, a few weeks, but uh, we, we're not using the guy we used to use because he no longer is in business. Um, he is in business, I found out. He's just not doing that. He does he does tractor work because he just. He's not, he's, he's not doing roadside He's not mowing. doing that. That's that, correct. That's what I meant. He's yeah. not doing yeah. Roadside morning. So the only other person that I know that does it is a guy out of South Berwick, uh, Billy Reno, um, owns a construction company, and his rate is $135 an hour to come in and mow. Um, and what does that work out to? I haven't figured it out. I bought just $2,200. So we're not going to be able to mow. I remember mentioning to you that back uh, probably several months ago when we were building the budget that, that this was. Uh, going to be a problem and we said we'd figure it out somehow. So but it takes it take some it's a, to do the town and not even do it like immaculately, like the, way, like the way I'd like to see it is like 20, 28 to 34 hours depending on how heavy stuff is growing back in. So I'm assuming Dover has their own machinery. Yep. Some of them are probably have their own machinery. Yep. Do we know there's own machinery? Yep. So any other towns in the area that hire people? No, nope. I've already been down this avenue. No, nope. they don't rent out any of their... No, I don't want them to rent us their machine or all that would be nice, but um, are there other towns like Madbury? I can't imagine Madbury has its own machine. Right? I think they swap work out with like Barrington. Barrington has their own machine. Barrington has their own machine. We need to find a friendly neighbor with a machine that wants us for something for them. What do, what do we have to offer? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you do for them? <laughs> Family movie night. <laughs> <laughs> See now, Barrington does part of Dover's route on their end, right. and in return, Dover does their catch basins. All right, so we, we, we can't think of any other community that that hires someone to do this. We can ask them who they hire. There was a guy at Alton. I tried reaching out to him two or three times, and no call back. He works for the state mainly. He's not looking to, to do anything else. What rooms do we do? What rooms do we normally do? We need to do Sligo Road, we do Pincho Road, uh, we do Cloudry Street, we do Jesse Doe Road. Um, just about uh, just about every road in town gets 
hit somewhere or another. Yes and no. Oak Street, part of Oak Street gets hit. Good to catch up. Um, Dover does their side. We have to do ours. Um, John and Woods Run, the sections of Woods Run, uh, which starting to grow in the ditch line. So if we have to go with this, this person, gentleman from the south of Burley, yes, and he has a higher rate, is it, can we triage which roads have to be done and which ones can wait a year if we have to? Yeah, they're going to be impassable. That's why we mow it here, because the, the branches and the overgrowth are starting to grow into the road. So people are starting to drive more towards the center of the road. So every single road in town is like that? Good majority of them. Well, Jeff, I think what we need you to do is to do the math and let us know what's budgeted and what you think you need with this contractor. And the other thing I would like you to do, preferably before the end of June, which is fast approaching, is to go over your budget with Caroline, and particularly with regard to win the winter lines, to see what additional budget dollars you need to take you through. So if we did 30, 32 hours. Which that's usually what it uh, approximately takes. We're looking at forty-three hundred dollars. And what we have? It's like twenty-two hundred. So, so tell me the number again, please. Forty-three hundred. And the budget is twenty-two. Yeah, approximately twenty-two hundred. We have a back on the work that we have attachment. You could get one for our skid steel, but they're like 25 grand. That was okay. I'm not. I'm interested in buying them right now, so. Does it work? Would it work? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we do that? But it's just a question. If we're paying, you know, $4,300, why wouldn't we buy a $2,500 piece of equipment. $25,000. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, you asked the like, really? Why didn't we buy a $25,000 attachment? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Could you imagine why? I was off a decimal point. It's like a decimal, you know, it's, one. It's, an order, it's, all good. it's an order of magnitude. Oh, okay. $2,500, yes, we would have bought it a while ago. I hope. Uh, oh, tonight. The net, the net. Okay, well, now that we've got that taken care of. So, Please talk to Caroline, yep. look at your budget, and if there are items that you need to have increased to get you through the rest of the year, you can at least suggest that to Caroline. Okay? Yep. I mean, yours is one of those, you know, salt and winter help. I mean, it's all, I understand, yeah. but we need you to try to approximate. I mean, none of us can, are going to be able to, you know, project what the weather is going to be, but, you know, take your best guess at, at what you think would help get you through this fiscal year. Okay. If you could do it by the end of this week so that, because we're finishing up the, the budget. I'll try, I'll try and speed up with Caroline tomorrow. Yeah. It does, actually, it doesn't yeah. have to be this week, but this week or next, it would be helpful. Okay? Let's see what else we have. Thank you. Um, I think the other thing, parking on Founders Street, I need to talk to the Municipal Association. I, I just did not have time. Parking on Foundry? Yes. And manager of the transfer station, I haven't had time to look at those numbers either. So I just have a purchase order from Holly Snow, finally. Oh, they so, have oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so purchase order one one five three to make construction for hauling snow back in January, I believe. They had sent us the wrong bill. March, March third. So now we at least the bill makes sense? Have it's at least it billed to us. It was the bill makes sense. I had, to, go down, I had to literally go down there and argue with the lady who did billing and say who was there. She's okay. like, you know, how do you know? And I'm like, I, I work every time we all snow. I know what we have for equipment. I know what I'm paying for and I'm not paying you. They wanted to charge us for an extra truck for 10, 10 and a half hours. Okay, well thank you for overseeing that. Did you call the question? I'm sorry. I mean, did you uh, make the motion? I'll do it again. Let's start over. <laughs> Move to accept purchase order 1153 to make construction for, each ho for hauling snow um, back in March for a total of $2,730. Any discussion or questions? Thank you for getting paid to do it. All those in favor say aye. 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 
So it's not going to contingency. The budget dollars will probably move from there. But where would this come from? Normally? I don't have a line item for that. I've, I've asked for one. But What's it? What would we call it? Or, to snow, 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 snow removal. removal. Yeah. You just put it under. Uh, I don't even know what you put it under. We had it. Yeah. Thought we thought so remember. Let's create one, even though. Oh, well, we took it out of the general fund yeah. last time. The budget committee would yell at me, but I don't, I don't <laughs> want to know what. You know, it came what out of winter with. help? Pardon? No. Winter help it didn't come out of? I, mean, I understand it's not. Well, it is winter help. Yes, it is winter help. That's that's a labor line in particular. Right. No, I understand that, but we're oh, we're engaging people to come right. and do it. I mean, so. it's not like the perp. We have the purpose, whether it's, you know, finely enough, you know, or too finely stated in there. I mean, this is not a new purpose. This no. is something that we do. So, um, so it should come out of the snow. We'll talk about creating a snow removal line. Did I call it a question? Oh, yeah. it Almost. All it's right. Close. All right. Let's do it. Let's call the question. All those in favor of uh, purchase order to pay new construction two thousand seven hundred thirty dollars. Signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Anything else in your bag of tricks there, Jody? You didn't sign us. Yeah. And I believe the one for RD Concrete, you need to sign his, as a form, you need to sign for his contract also. Yeah. No, he didn't get, I, I got to sign an email, I'm sorry. I'll get it tomorrow from Carolina and you guys can sign it. All right, so yeah, is it like a con it. contract? It's just, yeah, it's just stating it. That would be for you to sign um, the contract, contract to our RD concrete for race pads at transfer station. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 All right, so as soon as you get that in, I'll, I'll sign it. And I'm here tomorrow at 9. I don't know if you can get it here by then. I'll be here by sometime you know, from 9 to about 9, 9 30. Okay. Anything else? Okay, I think I think we're good. Thank you, Jeff. Oh, well, look, look. Can we ask? Let me ask you some questions about the snow. What, so he started out by saying there were two issues. Actually, I thought Mr. Cooper. Yes, Mr. Cooper. So one is that I believe, if I heard it correctly, we're crossing onto his driveway, not just the road. So the a sidewalk road. goes through his driveway. Yes, like I, all I get like that. through. Yes. Right. He was saying that the truck was go a truck, the truck was going onto the driveway and dumping snow in his yard. That I have no knowledge of that. And Is you plow that route that I've gone. I I, I, I personally plow that route. Right. We are running with him this year because he was angry because we came. I, we were trying to clean up and I was starting to lose the road. So one of the last storms, I, I pushed back a little bit to show where the Cape Cod berm is. There's a, there's a berm that it exposes all the structures in, in Doherty. I push the snow back to expose all the structures, just like I do throughout Stockdale. So he, I guess, just got done snowballing the driveway. So, so I got to clean. When you move the snow back, where did it go? It goes on the sidewalk and in people's driveways. That's, that's what happened with it. I don't know. Not unless I got a heater or something on the truck, I can melt it as I go. But that's where it goes. So when I, when I do the, the cul de sac, it, in Doherty. I go around it one way and I have to go around it the other way and push everything in and I push everything out. Well, when I was coming out, he stood in the middle of the road and he jumped up on the truck and he started pointing his finger and, and swearing an X, Y, and Z at me saying, you know, how dare you, what's wrong with you, F this, F that, F this. I got on a radio call PD. That's that one situation. And other time I was snow blowing, he didn't want snow in his yard. He got upset over that. He filed a complaint, I believe, at that point in time, too. When I snow blow, I try to blow the snow directly beside me when I'm blowing. Obviously, when the pile comes up here, I have to raise the chute a little bit to get it to go out a little bit. What happens when you hit a driveway? If the driveway's short enough, I can blow past it, and I can blow on the other side. But if you have a long or wide driveway, I can't fill the snow that far. Our machine is only a 60, like a 65 horsepower machine. It doesn't have the capacity or the power to blow snow 200 feet. So at that point in time, like they do in my driveway, they angle it and they snow blow the sidewalk and I have to go out there and shovel it and snow blow it and take care of it. 
Well, we can see, we can remind ourselves what our snow policy says. I don't really remember what is germane in that. Does somebody want to look at that to see it? I remember the conversation back in. But people that do snow build their driveways, I try not to blow snow back in their yard in any way, shape, or form. But it happens. <laughs> it's, it's winter. Seven, eight times, and you guys have to replow it in every time. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mine's growing up, and we just have to keep plowing the ends of our driveway. Well, that's what we need to keep doing now. And that's what she said. It's just, you know. She says, I shovel the, the sidewalk in front of my house, but they, we don't have a snow removal in the village on my street. We have a couple machines to fix it on the snow block. The sidewalk's too narrow. The plow comes by and fills our snow mm -hmm. plow. It is what it is. So, I mean, it's very frustrating. I get it, but I'll go take a look at his driveway and the. Yeah, see, I'd, li I'd like to go there when you do. You're going. I know where five is. Because our parents used to live there. Is he like? If I'm looking at if five. You're going, if you're going on Doherty, what first house on the left hand side? He's on the corner. First house on the left hand side. Yeah. You got a row of pine trees or spruce trees or whatever they are right there where the sidewalk runs. Yeah. Right after this, the spruce trees. His house is right there. And then his driveway. The sidewalk extends probably from here to the wall, past his driveway, and then the sidewalk just dead ends. I don't even do that part. But I do, depends on what way I'm snow blowing. You know, either I'll access. Do you know where five Doherty Lane is? I don't. You don't know. It's on my head. So either I'll come in from Stockdale Lane and I'll snow blow that way, or I'll come in, I'll drive down Doherty, and I'll, I'll access through his driveway, which I'm still on the sidewalk at that point in time. And I access the sidewalk and I snow blow and off I go. Okay, well thank you. Appreciate it. Mike, take a look at But as far as a loader ever going to his door yet, I've never been in his door yet with a, with a loader. At least I have. I don't know anybody else has. I got one. Um, this is actually just oh, the permit to open and obstruct streets. water and sewer department. Yeah. Yeah. I thought we signed it. We they do. It. You know, it says that they can't find it. It's not anything. I'm not sure what happened to the original. Okay. Hmm. All right. So this is a permit to open and obstruct uh, to the water and sewer district. Mm -hmm. Uh, which we've already agreed to at some point. So, so I'm just signing it again because we've already done this. So we don't have to take it off. Uh, they ever lost the copy or we lost the copy? That reason? Whatever. We've already executed this. So we're going to do it to December 31st, 2017. Oh, no, that's the signature of contract. So I sign it. Have we had any difficulty with any of the work done by the water district this year? I don't know if that would be done. I think it would be done. Okay. So I'm going to make a note to make sure that they're aware of the schedule this summer about our culprits. We'll just let them know. Sources that apparently the fire department and myself in particular have been torn apart through social media because we uh, did not fulfill what their needs were. I did not see any. I saw it. I don't even know who the people are. They say I don't return emails. I don't. Re I mean, you can go like this. That's fine. But I'm just stating my side of the story. No, I don't know who the women are. 
I do not know their names, their numbers, or anything. I found them out tonight because I got the information from some of the people in the audience. Okay. But I was accused of things that I never even did. Fair enough. And I take offense to that. I don't even know who's women are. Are they rec committee members? They are apparently the two that run. Okay. And, like and they said, were bad mouthing you all on social media. Myself and social media through the fire department saying that. Okay. I know we tried and we tried it yeah. exponentially hard to get you your training. Yeah. Either through our individuals, and that couldn't happen to Sean just in his work schedule. Um, we tried through York, and that failed too. So in their vision, it worked out. We went through the school. Right. Yeah. I remember that because I've been yeah. in here a few times and everything was kind of flowing that way. Yeah. But for whatever reason, apparently that does not satisfy what they wanted to see. Okay. So they decided to vent some of that in the fire department. And I take severe exception to it. I would too. I, I just wanted know, everybody here to be witness well, to that. Thank you for telling us that. Where, yeah, where was it? Social media. Yeah, I, but I mean, like it was on like on a Facebook page or something. We know which one. So, so I don't, because I don't really do it. I had people come in the fire station tonight. So have you seen this? Yeah. Have you seen this? Have you seen? This? I don't follow that stuff. I yeah, stay yeah. out of it because there's nothing good that comes from it. Yeah. But when there's something that reflects on the image of the fire department and okay. myself as a Absolutely. personal attachment, you like? I have an issue. What well, would help? Would it help for us to write something? Just a general. Well, they have to be spoken to because they're appointed people. They represent us. I'm not easy. I mean, I'm not hard to find. Yes. <laughs> I'm in here all the time. I'm very accessible. I'm transparent in everything I do. But when I turn around and see something like this, I'm just not well, it's, 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 it's And it's, it's, it's disappointing for, two, for at, least, at least two reasons. It's disappointing because the issue was resolved, for one. For two, you know, when you, when we are, it's not easy for, for us, as we know. It's not mm -hmm. easy for any of us who are trying to do our jobs. And to have some, some part of us you know, if this is what's happened, I don't, I'm just hearing this. If some part of us is not helpful to another part of us, it, it brings us it all, it, well, it's not helpful, it, it brings need us to all go down. It's the social media aspect of things. And that's, that's correct. What, that's what upset me more than anything. Yes. It's not that hard to find me. Yes. The fire station sits right there. It's very easy to find it and contact the people that you need to contact. I've been here most Monday nights. Yes. Had contact with you. You and I have numerous emails back and forth trying to square away things. And when they say that I don't answer stuff or do this and this, this and this, you are. Right. I've never had any contact with you. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I'm getting bad mouth. The department as a whole gets thrown under the bus. No. Does not sit very well. Yeah. It leaves a very no, sour okay. taste in my mouth. That's what's in here. I told you that we were going to put together a I'm first aid kit. Yeah. And that's what this is. This is some of the stuff that we've taken out of our supplies within the fire station to get them started. Okay. The other thing that we do is when we go through our cabinet where we keep our stuff and we do it twice a year we update it make sure they have shelf life so mm -hmm. we ordered some other stuff i have right here in front of me a, an order that we were going to give them an order a nice spanking brand new state-of-the-art first aid kit i wouldn't at this point they will be fine with what i brought them and whatever you gave well us that's kind of where i was going with that. absolutely no, it's it's not acceptable. I mean, I was more than willing to help out and do what we can because we get a very much reduced rate when we order these things Absolutely. in the bulk that we do. Yeah. So we were going to do that and hand that over to them. And my company made a nice donation this week as well. Well, that's so excellent. Very good. They don't know it yet, but they made a wonderful donation. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. So, but yes, and so they have ice packs. They have the they have. And that's a lot of what is in here. And I apologize. It probably mimics a lot of what you may have already right. had. But like I said, I have a receipt right here. Nope. You need, you need, uh, you need, uh, what you need a radius. I know. No, I apologize, Chief. I did not know anything about that. And I, the social media sites that I am on, I did not see any of it. So it might be one that I'm not, I'm not on. I mean, like, or blocked they just off. showed it. I don't even know what it was, but. See it tonight, and I didn't even know who these people were. I think I was in here one night when they were trying to resurrect this thing after it was came crashing down, and the town was basically going to just kind of step away. And I think that's the night. I think it was the two weeks that were that started. This was months ago. Mm -hmm. months know, they, ago. They, they, I don't remember. They've done a wonderful well. job, so I want I want to make sure. Oh, I want to say they've done a wonderful job. Oh, well, this is like in the last day or two. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Well, we just you're you're surmising. There's perhaps the the. The two people who were here earlier. 
I couldn't pick them out of a lineup if I saw them today. So, so the rec committee's done. I just want to say the rec committee's done a wonderful job bringing, you know, the rec committee bring it back. Yes, absolutely. Sure, yeah. Now, they are many of them are people new to town government. It's not an excuse, but it, it is a fact of life. And so, to the extent that our board member here so we can work with them to instruct them, because I'm deeply disappointed in that. It's something I would want to see. And it's, it's not how I, I'll speak it. It's not how this board feels about the fire department at mm all. -hmm. So, so please know that. Well, yeah, I just got one of them. Yeah, no, no, I'm glad you brought it to our attention. You know, you don't want to have these little poison pills or whatever they are just kind of out there. It's just like, oh, it's a great way to put it. Well, I think it's hard because I know they've already reached out and want the explorers to come down and talk to the group and do some other things yeah. like that. It's, it's a big wish. Sure, yeah, of course it does. Exactly. And, and, I mean, I have a hard time going to the, you know, the explorer. Uh, we'll get over to see the program and say, well, you need to go do this. Well, look what they're just saying about us and, yeah. and, and the place as a whole. It's kind of hard to Perhaps to Jody can that. help engineer a, sure. a, a, a remedial yeah. session. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. Facilitative <laughs> session. <laughs> We, we learn. We learn by doing sometimes. Okay. <laughs> we learn by doing. Okay. You want this? Would you mind if I take it? Of course not. Thank you so much, Jim. I do appreciate it, and I'm, I'm I'm extremely disappointed and upset. Kind of happy. So. Me too. Yeah. It will be addressed tomorrow. Thank you. I don't see it. Not on either of those two. The three um, is the. Uh, the Rollinsburg Taxpayer Association is not there. Rollinsburg Taxpayer for Fiscal Responsibility, not there. It's not a Rollinsburg Happenings. Is there something that's something mom, Raleigh mom, 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 so I don't know where it is. I don't either. So I'm just, somebody showed it to me. I believe you. I just, I, 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 I can't. Well, can we, can we help with anything else you've brought to us? Because I'm not sure what else, you know, we'll. The only other thing I just want to update you on is when we, Worked all the way through the budget way back in last year, and I wanted to upgrade the station maintenance account and whatnot so we could get some projects done. One of the projects that I mentioned that I wanted to do was to redo the floors. We've contacted three different companies, and we have one that we've kind of settled with. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, he came in and been at the station twice. He kind of reviewed what we want to do, and, and he gave us his recommendations, and we kind of oversaw everything that we had there. He understands why we have the problems we have. So um, we're in the process of trying to set that up and get that done. I don't have the PO tonight because we're still kind of going back and forth on how much we're Well, even an estimate is helpful because that yeah. we prefer to see it before. Right, our and that's what we're going to be. But I just wanted to let you know that's where we're at. Because basically, it's <coughs> said those floors that we have, it's a cement floor. They've never been treated or sealed. We basically, we're just going to paint it over. And that's why we constantly have the problem when we falling apart due to the moisture issues and whatnot. So this company is it's Frank Bernard concrete finishing out of Rochester. And they were going to come in completely strip the floors, acid wash it, and there's a seven step process which they go through mm -hmm. to make them so that they, uh, they're going to look like that. And they're going to stay like that for 20 years, that's a guarantee. So that's kind of where we're headed. Now I know you guys have all been in the fire station, but you may not have gone out to the back where the waiting room is and the meeting room and all that stuff. And seeing, yeah, but not, I, I don't remember what the floors look like. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> but I believe you. Seeing what they look like, yeah. and, and as much as the building is a lot of public coming through it, and, and the training and whatnot that we do, it's something yeah. I want to address. So, is it just the, the public areas like that, Chief, or are you, are they, do they do the, the bays too, where the trucks? You can are? do the bays, but that's, that's not, not what you're looking at. No, I'm looking at the areas where. Uh, it's the training room, which yeah. is used by multiple agencies, not only us. Yeah. It's our meeting room, and then it's the radio. So the non-vehicular rooms. Pretty the much. The rooms that are used yeah. for something other than storing exactly. the vehicles. Yeah, you know, where the public will come in and yeah. have classes, and it just yeah. looks like hell. Yeah. So it's one thing I want to dress up to see what the station itself will pop up. The kitchen is little right now. Yeah. And it's something, we've got some other projects in the kitchen. We're looking at. Yeah. So, and like I said, we, we expanded that line and this is just one of those projects that I have looked at. Mm -hmm. so, but uh, to do the whole floors that he wants to do, and they do it by square foot, and it was close to five grand, but I'm not going to do that, only because I don't want to expend the line. Because I know between now and December, something's going to go. It always does. There's a door for a thousand dollars, and kind of break or something else. So we're going to kind of engage and, and kind of bring that in piece by piece. But 
we're looking roughly right now to do two of the larger floors, like three grand. But it's within your budget. It is. It's within that budget, but I wanted to let you know where we were, where we were this going. This build-up, I didn't know if we were uh, it's like a $10,000. Or... No, I wouldn't do that for you. Because I come in here and present it that way when I come in and talk. I try not to. I try no. to, I try no, to no, give no, you the no. background, still, the history of We're still feeling guilty about the radio, so try to figure that one out. <laughs> so We've already done some figuring out on our own, and we found a place that might be able to get it at $1,800 off the top cheaper for the exact same rate. Okay. So yeah. that ball has not just been pushed into the corner. We've done some work in trying to find that. Well, and we're going to work package. at that, too. I mean, we're not going to let, you know, obviously we need to finish the job, but it, it just took us by surprise because yeah. we didn't, you know, that Warren article just isn't available and so and it wasn't in the operating budget. So we just have to find it. We just need to figure it out. So well, I guess, you know, as long as I'm sitting in this seat and holding this position, it's kind of like something I probably need a little more cognizant of myself because we knew we were going to kind of bank that if we wanted to use it because we weren't going to move forward with the other one. I didn't realize that there was a stipulation of the timeline and what yeah. kind of money goes away. You know, the Warren articles don't, you don't bank them. It won't happen again. I'll tell you Just that. Don't bank them. If we it, there are a lot of rules and regs, and it, go, it's, a it's a learning process for all of us. Mm -hmm. And so this was just something that happened. The good news is we're not talking $15,000, you know, or $30,000. So it could be a whole lot worse. Oh, yeah. Yes, it could. Yes, it could. So it's, you know, it's, it's manageable. Yeah. That's where we're at. So I just want to keep you updated on what's happening up there. So. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. And just well, sorry you for guys go up to Sanford the other day. Everybody. Oh, wow. I went there yesterday. Did you? Something yeah. Yeah. Rubber neck and it's still smoke. Right? Well, they called back. Smoke the next day, they called back a lot of ladder trucks. The biggest issue that fire was the fact that they it's all exterior firefighting. Nobody's inside. Yeah. It is the ladder trucks that they had come smaller ladders and they couldn't reach the building. They you, had had a, you needed the bigger trucks with a hundred foot area. They had one there the yesterday and the ladder went about halfway up wow. inside the building. So yeah. how does the size of this mill compare to, to what we have? Huge. Yeah. That is twice the size. Right? Oh really? Huge. Oh. And uh, really close to two buildings. Yeah, close two one next to each other there was a connecting building and between they the two and that's where they, from hopping over that's that's one, where they, so, they did uh, have fire in the other one but they managed to keep it out of there. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah it's it would be same kind of show down here. The problem with this one, if we have an incident, is that one there, with the proximity of the two mills being so close together, they can only fight the, the one that was involved in fire basically on three sides. If this one I already gone, we only have two sides. Can't use the river. Mm -hmm. We can use the front side and we can use the bridge. We really can't go down below because of the proximity to the two. So we'd right. be even more behind. Mm -hmm. The fact that that whole neighborhood can go up has a good job. So. I guess. Uh, I heard tonight that they actually found some Three kids. individuals that started the fire. Three juveniles, right? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. South Portland had a juvenile detention center mm -hmm. this evening. It's quite a foster. Good for them if they could do that that quick. Yeah. But, you know, when you look at those kind of things, 7 o'clock at night on a Friday when there's everybody downtown, but yeah. this is, when you look at and investigate those things, they just don't add up. It's something that's just out of place. You get that much fire that quick, that mm -hmm. time of day. So it all points to something else. Mm -hmm. There's no power in the building, and all of them just yeah. that. So it's yeah, like if you go check it out, it's amazing. This whole neighborhood, there's a whole huge neighborhood behind it. Mm -hmm. And it didn't go up, it. so yeah. it's a huge complex. Yeah. Well, you know, I had some people that paid me. I was up over in Summers River that night. It was like seven yeah. o'clock, and I get a page, you know, fire in Sanford. And saying, mm -hmm. What about Sanford? We don't go to Sanford, right? Well, when you get the five alarms. You end up going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so you just have to move. You move closer and closer and closer until you get there. So it's still smoke coming out of this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Want to take pictures? Everybody mm -hmm. goes to it's crazy. Yeah, everybody. It's, it's, it's kind of old home. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Have a nice evening. You too. Thanks, But before we, can we just go back to building inspector real quick? Yep. Um, yes. I don't want to lose sight. Oh, yes, right. Thank, thank you. We need to go through we need, that. Um, a building permit um, was not issued or wasn't pulled back. That, or I don't have the sign for um, the business block on Front Street, one that's 72. And I don't know which end is which, but it's um, the entire business block on Front Street. Doodlebug's in, Alondra Mad, and with the diner in there. Or, or what, 
Coffee. Oh, Black Bean Cafe and uh, whatever else was in there. Um, they had their roof a couple of years ago. And we didn't get a permit. No. All right, so should All we have... All Brothers at Burwick did it. Pardon? The, the company that did it was All Brothers. Okay. So shall we send a letter? They were there for a week. And okay. They did a pretty good job. That's me. Okay, do we have Caroline do that? Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right, so now I'm, I'm going to go back through department head because we just jump, jumped around to whoever was here. So ordinance housing standards, you know, it's something we need to go through when we have time. Yeah. Yeah. And schedule some time. Okay. Health inspector. Okay, I do have an update. I uh, spoke with Tom Clark early this morning, and he said that um, he would accept the position of health inspector, yeah. he said that from a budgetary standpoint, he right now is on average spending probably more than the four, all, four hours a week that they're right. currently paying. And so he would like us, the board, to consider uh, for next January uh, uh, six hours a week, which would include the health health inspector part. So we could use the $500 that's currently, currently in that line you know, just help fund that out, you know, how much, how many extra hours that would fund. So anyway, I told him, uh, I thanked him, and um, the board will consider that when it's budget time. Did you make a note of it, so you know, yeah. I, <laughs> and you yes. yes, good. Not yet, but I will. Let me, let me make that There's note. There's no way I won't remember that. <laughs> so this is a one-year appointment, right? I don't know. I, I think Sean was appointed for more than one year. I thought it was two years. Is I thought it was multiple years also. Yeah, I thought it was more than one. Are you seeing? Did we recommend it to the, to the state? To the state, and the state actually does the uh, appointed to the state. Yes, and then based on our recommendation. Per RSA, an appointment term is three years, and deputy health officer term shall run concurrently with the house officer's term. The law also requires a health officer to be resident of the state of Michigan. Just yes. the state. Yep. That's all. So it's just one. Did Caroline fill it out for just one year? She was going to fill it out. Is it filled out or is it just empty? No, it's empty. Um, well, we, she did say she would fill it out for us. If we, if we wanted to appoint Tom, then she would take care of the paperwork. Okay. How much, how much work is involved in this? Yeah. Um, how much work is involved in what, Jenny? Health officer. Oh, sorry. You know, how many, how much work to, yeah, to be I'm health officer? To it depends. On, the it depends on what the issues are. Yeah, we have so we had bed bugs, we had transfer station bed bugs, we had, um, you know, we've yeah, had. With stills and bits. Yeah, we've had. Bed bugs, stills and bits. We've had mattresses outside of apartments. We've had compost issues. Yeah. We've had. Yeah. Yep, you know, there are life, life safety issues, you know, blah, blah, blah. So the one good thing about that, though, is with that building, if we send Tom, it would be a twofer who could be going in as building inspector also, so. That's true. So, on that one, anyway. The rest of them, no. But. Oh, well, I don't think of it. Didn't he have some, uh, he have some scope of service with the bed bugs, too? Very minor, maybe. Well, he is currently deputy health inspector. And I know, but it wasn't the, as building inspector. I thought he played some role. He did. Minor, but I, I think some of it. It's mostly the health officer. So, what is the board's um, pleasure? He's not asking for additional resources this year. Just the five hundred dollars is in that one. Oh, okay. so we're fine until the other year. Yeah. Then we may have to reconsider. Can we? Well, he can resign. He can resign. Right. He, can, yeah. he can resign. You know, yeah. we can appoint somebody else. Yeah, yeah. we can want to, yeah. So we should stay on the lookout for them. Sure. Is he happy to be? Like, uh, what's his feeling on it? Like, is it like, oh, okay, I'll do it because he feels bad for us? Well, I, I don't. <laughs> let, 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 let me ask you this question. Would you enjoy being health inspector for the town of Bronxville? Would you enjoy it? No. I, I have to say that I would not enjoy it either. Right. So I think he's doing the town a favor. Yes. Because for the $500 stipend that it is, 
the people that I do that know that would do well at this job, I'm like, they're not going to get me to walk into a building once for $500 well, uh, that, for a whole year. It, exactly. That's, that is the issue. So, you know, he gets, he does a little bit better if we move it to his line mm -hmm. and increase the number of hours. But, yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's difficult. Well, that is simple. Let's not move the line. Well, we're not. We, we would move the amount. Right, but yeah. not. No, we would leave the box or whatever. Yeah, that's just because we want to remember. Because it's not always possible. It's not going to always be possible that the health inspector is going to be the code enforcement officer or the code inspector. Okay. So yeah, it's more. It's the budget dollars. The line stays where it is, and mm -hmm. you know, I'll have a little note that says this is currently being handled by the. Move to appoint Tom Clark for health officer of the town of Rome for a three year term. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 And it's going to require all our signatures, I guess. So, so and when we're do done this, we should think about uh, if we want to have, because I did, I believe Sean said he would accept being deputy. Mm -hmm. Did he? he did. Yes, he did. Thank he did. you. Yeah. So we can appoint him uh, deputy. And I don't think it has all those same. He may have all those paperwork. I don't know, but I would entertain a notion to appoint. There's no salary dollars. I would entertain a or stipend. I would entertain a notion in motion to appoint Sean Gordon as deputy so health inspector. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Was in favor say aye. 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 All right, I'll have Caroline finish the paperwork. On that. are done with department head business unless yep. okay so town administration project updates uh, town hall drainage we did sign the change order uh, that ended up being not to exceed twelve thousand five hundred dollars and they're they are going to pour some foam into the mm -hmm. wall somehow into the premises there. The stuff up. Yeah. Uh, so they have restarted the, the project I don't have anything else to say in drainage. I thank the board for the extra work that we all did last week to try to resolve this issue. Uh, our culprits project. So <clears throat> we are trying to move along with the, uh, what I call a notice of award. I think Coyle Tanner calls it the notice to proceed. But it's the, you know, what we, what we do to, to say, okay, we're all set. A uh, contractor, you know, we're, we're giving you the, the right to work on these things. So we're trying to get that in place and trying to organize a pre-construction meeting. We're still, uh, you know, we need to get the final approval from the USDA, so we're still working on that. So right <coughs> now, there isn't anything for us to sign, but it may come all of a sudden, you know, and we're not meeting next month. So I will have given all a call and we'll uh, notice it. And if we need to sign the notice to proceed, we'll, it should be like, you know, a 10, 15 minute at that meeting. Okay. All right. Um, so Hoyle Tanner, is, did you, I hope there's a task order somewhere. Did someone see the task order? Yeah, I don't know. 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 So I spoke with Aaron last week, and he uh, said that he would submit a task order to help us with construction administration, mm -hmm. for one, and for two, the right-of-way work that Will Tanner already did, trying to help us with the easements and the rights-of-way. So together, a spreadsheet to show you. What's the first thing? 
organizing to work. Oh, it, it, I'm sorry, what, Sally? What was the first thing? That I did? I'm sorry, I just had a bad itch. It's a, it's a task order from Boyle Tanner, all right? Yes. So there were two things you had working on. One was right away. Oh, oh, the first okay. thing you mentioned. Construction administration. Construction administration. Right. And the other is uh, right. the rights of way, the easement plans, the easement preparation, working with the folks. So can I tell you what we will be talking about this? So what you see on the first page is the budget that we initially uh, provided to USDA for the $430,000, you know, 380 of it from them, 50 of it from our culvert fund. And now this is a revised budget based on some of the things that we know now that we did not know then. So if you look at short-term financing, there's a little more money there. Uh, the 10% contingency is actually a little bit more. Whatever was left over, I stuck there, so we still have a little, a little bit better padding than the 10%. This is the construction administration. <clears throat> The task order, so construction administration is 18807 This task order is for 6319 So the rest of that line is really us, with all the work that we're going to do for administration. So it's not going to be money out the door. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, again, savings or something that can be redirected if we've got to that. Pardon? Yeah, it's... it's, it's it's contributed salaries and time and that sort of thing. Jeff's, mine, Caroline's, ours. Uh, engineering design, so that budget hasn't changed. It was covered by task order five. The engineering preliminary engineering report was covered by task order five. Uh, the construction, this uh, obviously that's gone up from what we had originally budgeted based on the proposal, and it's the Parker proposal with the first change order, that $4,000 that never made it to the bid form. Um, legal, we've got 5000 budgeted. So far we have a bill for 300 from Steve, and we have um, uh, uh, closing costs on the short-term financing, which are legal and settlement costs, and we'll see if we, if we put it under, we can check with Tom Dumay whether it goes here under short-term financing or whether it goes under the <coughs> bond council, you know, we're, we'll be getting a bill for, a, I can't remember exactly what it is in total, the distribution to the culprit fund will be 5000 uh, Land right easements, we budgeted a lot because we thought we might have to do surveys or appraisals and that sort of thing. We didn't have to do that, but you could see um, uh, we've now reduced that budget to 9919 it, it, it encompasses task order eight, which we're going to be looking at. The easement costs that we signed off on and that Caroline has paid. And easement titles, which is not, um, it's not clear that we're going to have to do that. So, um, so that's easements. For, so for a total of $430,000. So I wanted to know where task order eight comes into this. And it comes in to the easement line. Mm -hmm and it comes into the construction administration. And if you haven't seen it, here it, I and mean, if you actually want to look at it, did it not go out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and the next page, I forgot, the next page is the actual cost to date, the individual transactions. So if you want to see what we've actually paid at the door. <clears throat> So the task order works under our uh, general agreement that we signed in April, last April, early May. And it's, the scope is for the easements and the construction administration. Mm -hmm. So when Jeff is not able to, to manage things, I mean, we will be able to use Royal Tanner for this task order. Perfect. Motion accept proposed task order number eight for on-call engineering services. 
for the amount of $9,838. Second. And that's for 10. Okay. Uh, any further questions or discussions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Sign it. Thank you for bringing us together. You're welcome. It, you know, you. Have to. You have to figure out where you know it's, it's complicated. So we've got different sources of funding, different task orders from the Tanner, you know. So a budget that you know USDA is, is asking us to follow and revise. Actually, they want me to do that on a separate, on a special form. I said, okay, I'll have to do that. I'll have to wait till tomorrow. Pardon? My yeah, my assistant. My, my yes. Please. Tomorrow morning, okay? No one tells you when you sign up for the USDA loans that you need assistance. All right, so that's excellent. That's the task order. And now, now is it the signing party? Yes. It is. It's the signing party. I'm going to close this up and I'll use up my batteries. All right, so this. Please remind me there's some other closing documents I get from the bank that are not printed out because when I asked Kathleen, Kathleen when I asked Carolyn at the end of the day, and she, I don't think she got them. So I want to read them to you and get an authorization if possible for me to sign them tomorrow. Okay. So you have to remember that. All right, so first, this is not anything we signed. This is an FYI uh, that Rennell, our bond counsel, is sending to the treasurer of the state of New Hampshire. Uh, it, Pursuant to RSA 6 B colon 3, I'm writing to advise you the issuer is intending to issue the note in accordance with the following terms. So, principal amount just under 380,000, right? This one didn't get made equal. So, it's $379,459 at an interest rate of 1.25%. Final maturity is March 26, 2018, and the closing date is tomorrow and the purchaser is the Kenny Buck Savings Bank. So this is just an FYI. So the bank, uh, I don't, these are not in any particular order, the bank is asking us to certify our mailing address. Please provide your correct mailing address by completing this form. What we'll future corresponds with email. So the address is exactly the same as the address listed above. No, it is not. What is our PO number? 309. PO Box 309. Can we? Can you? Can you verify that? Can, sure. can you look at the website? I can look at the Is it there? PO Box 309. Okay, and our phone number is 603 742 2510. Yeah. Okay. This form must be complete and accurate. All right, so I am going to really no, I'm not making this up. I think we can all sign this, so we don't really have to vote or vote be our signatures. Michael. So now I'm looking at the settlement statement from the Kennebunk Savings Bank. <clears throat> it has the $500 document fee, which we knew about, and also legal fees from Bozen and Associates for $850. And again, we'll, we'll check with uh, DRA. It will either come out of the, or USDA, it will either come out of the loan line, the short term, the bond anticipation line, or the legal line. And it's for $1,350. I think you, you signed a check. Okay, so this is the this is the authorization for you to sign the check because okay. we didn't have any anything else. Caroline had wanted me to to do that. So, all right. So I would like a motion to uh, authorize payment of the closing costs to Kenny Buck Savings Bank for one thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. So, we have a second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Boson and Associates. Yes.
think this is our last go round until we actually close on USDA, whatever that is. Don't tease us. It's, uh, it is weary, honestly. It is truly weary. Okay, that's fine. This is. No, just me on that one. This is the schedule. We don't have to sign this like the last time. It just says what we're borrowing $379,459, the interest rate 1.25%, and the premium paid by purchaser, if any, and that's not applicable. So it's just, you can take a look at that. That's the. Okay. Here is the <coughs> note. So it's just one of these. Okay, so the bond note, again, says that it's a bond anticipation note. The interest is 1.25%. The maturity date is March 26, 2018. The original issue date is tomorrow, June 27, 2017. The registered owner is the Kenny Fox Savings Bank, and the principal amount is $379,459. We can prepay, there are no prepayment penalties on this. Good, and, we got money lying around. <laughs> and there's, uh, so the final paragraph says, in witness whereof the issue has caused this note to be executed on its behalf. Um, by at least a majority of its board of selectmen and countersigned by its treasurer and it's sealed to be affixed here too. So we all get a shot at this. So um, I guess we don't I guess we don't need a motion for going to sign it. But would you say that that's true, Mr. Parliamentary, or should we uh... Okay, this is a big deal. Let's let's have a motion oh, to authorize the bond anticipation note of three hundred and seventy nine thousand four hundred and fifty nine dollars to the Kenny Box Savings Bank. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so this is the document that has just one original. Hmm? Yeah, the others, there are three copies of each. But bond, it was like that with the municipal bond bank, too. Yeah. We just had one bond note. And, uh, Beverly's coming in tomorrow morning to sign whatever pieces the treasurer needs to sign. Mm -hmm. well, what's that now? So is, this, is it our town clerk who signs that one? Or should we go back and do something with this one? Okay, that's, that would be okay. Uh, um, so that's good. Yeah. Okay, let me just take a peek at that. Here, can I talk while you're doing that, Jerry? Sorry. So this, the, the next three, we have three copies now of, um, the, I think, most of the rest of the forms. So the first one is the IRS form 8038-G, which is what we signed for the bond note. The difference is the amount of 379,800. Excuse me, and the yield of just 1.25 percent. So. I will entertain a motion to have me sign this. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, 
so there should be three copies of this, Julie. I'm going to start handing them to you. I want to Problem is, Jody, no, nobody else knows how to work it. and tax certificate. We signed the exact same thing for the Municipal Bond Association. What's different here is that the note is for $378,459. And I am about to look to see who needs to sign it. The treasurer will sign it and the governing board signs it. All right, so, the, um, so I will hand this over all of us. I am signing it. I suspect my hey, colleagues will also sign it. temporary. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember this one. This is a resolution of the governing board. So the undersigned, at least a majority of the governing board of the issuer, which is the town of Rollinsford, and the treasurer of the issuer, hereby certify I, one, that a meeting of the governing board of the issuer was held with respect to the issuance of the notes approved of this. Two, that notice of said meeting was afforded to said officers and the public in accordance with the provisions of RSA 91-A as amended in the applicable rules and bylaws of the issue. If any. So our meetings are sort of standard always notice. Three, that at least a majority of the governing board were present throughout said meeting. We never uh, skip out. We're always here. Four, that the following votes were adopted at said meeting, all as being in the best interests of the issuer. And five, that the resolution set forth below have not been repealed, amended, or rescinded as of the date hereof. So, we voted to authorize the issuance of $379,459 bond anticipation notes, which were authorized by the issuer on March 18, 2017. Such notes to be dated tomorrow, June 27, 2017. Voted to sell said notes to the purchaser with the principal amounts, maturities, premium, if any, there are not, there's none. Redemption provisions, if any, and interest rates specified on Schedule A attached here too. That was the schedule I showed you earlier and made a part hereof. Voted to issue the notes in substantially the form set forth in Schedule B attached here too and made a part hereof. Form of notes, that's interesting. Um, voted to authorize at least a majority of the governing board and the treasurer to sign the notes 
or to have said signatures printed in facsimile on the notes and to affix the issuer's seal thereto. Voted to authorize the treasurer to deliver the notes to the purchaser against payment therefore. Voted to authorize at least a majority of the governing board and the treasurer to execute and deliver a signature and no litigation certificate with receipt, a no arbitrary, no arbitrage and tax certificate, and IRS form 8038G in substantially the form presented at this meeting and such other documents as may be necessary or appropriate to accomplish the sale and delivery of the notes in accordance with the foregoing. And voted to authorize the issuer to serve as its own paying agent with respect to the notes. Dated as of this 27th day of June, 2017. You good with this? Yes. All right, we are all going to sign this and tomorrow, mm -hmm. hopefully, it's Beverly will be signed. Here There is nothing on the Schedule B that was referred to, so I'll just assume that that was intentionally left blank. All right, we're going to sign three of these. is the signature and no litigation certificate with receipt. So we sign the same thing for the bond banks that the amounts are different and the issuer is different. So this is, uh, I'm sure it says, I didn't even say actually. Oh, right here, sorry, yes. Okay. So it's the same sort of things that we're certifying to. You're, I'm welcome, you know, if you'd like to take a look and read it again. But other than the amount, it is the same. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. <coughs> right, we didn't all of a sudden take out another bond. Or, you know, Pardon? Why did it do this again? Good point. Not eyes. <laughs> It that's printed. Now, I got something from Kenny Bunk Savings Bank at the end of the day, so if you're here with me, these are the documents that um, I would like to get your authorization to sign once they're actually printed. So, one was the mail address certification. We've done that. Thank you, Denise. Bye. Uh, then there was a, certific a certification affidavit. Town of Rollinsford with a principal place of business, and this one has our PO box number, correct? Uh, says as follows, that the financial statements delivered to Kennebunk Savings Bank, the bank, so these are our audited financial statements that we gave them, I think it was, you know, 32 years ago, I'm not sure. It's a long time ago, but it's for the last three years. That they fairly represent the financial condition of the borrower as of the date thereof, there are audited statements, 
that there has been no material or adverse change in financial circumstances or any other condition of the borrower since the date of the original application, <coughs> which would warrant withholding or not making disbursements from the loan closed upon this date of the bank. <coughs> Two, that all representations made in the original loan application remain true and unchanged. <coughs> I don't know of any situation that is not the same. That there is no material litigation now pending or threatened against the borrower, which is which if adversely decided would materially impair, impair the ability of the borrower to perform its obligations here under under the loan documents. So I'm not aware of any of those. So, um, so that's what I would be signing, and then the uh, Kate would be uh, doing another report. So okay. So move to for me to sign the certification. Okay, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Let me see what else is in this bag, Trish. All right, this next one is called a compliance agreement. Again, we are the borrower, borrower and the lender is Kenny Bunk and Emma is. 59,495. 59. 59. 59. All right, and we'll make the date uh, so. I sign it. So, in consideration of the above described loan, the undersigned borrower and guarantors hereby agree to cooperate and adjust and execute any and all further documents which may be reasonably requested by lender or its attorneys in connection with the loan, including signing new documents for clerical errors. The purpose of this agreement is to enable lender to perfect lender security interest in the loan and any property secured for the borrower. Further, the undersigned agree, in order to comply with this request, to assure that this loan documentation will conform to and be acceptable in the marketplace for transfer, sale, or conveyance by lender of its interest in, in, interest in, and to said loan documentation. Executed as a sealed instrument on the date written above, which we'll have to do that. And again, this will be notarized by Kate. So, so, like so and what did you call it? A <laughs> this compliance? is a compliance agreement. Agreed. So essentially, okay. if, we have to, if we have to redo no. it, we're going to comply with that. If there's oh, yeah. a clerical error. Yeah. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Right. Disclosure of finance charges. Pursuant to RSA 399B, we are for the borrower. The amount of loan is. 379.459, payable on the 27th day of each month, which is when we're, we're closed, with the maturity date February 27, 2017. Yeah, correct. Yeah, I'll, I'll check on that. 1.25 fixed for the term of the loan. Interest sh shall be calculated on the basis of actual number of days elapsed and a 360 day year. Payments. The borrower shall pay one. Payment on a maturity date and the amount of all principal interest and other charges coming due under the note. Late fees. There was a late charge of 7% for any payment not made within seven calendar days of when due. This late charge will be payable on demand. Documentation fee of $500 and other fees are shown on the settlement statement of even a near date. We've seen that from the settlement statement. So borrowers and guarantors acknowledge receipt of a copy of this disclosure. So are you, would you Board authorize me to sign this. So, so, second. You can figure out who is a race to that. We'll let Salman figure that out. Okay. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 What's that? Disclosure of finance. All right. Notice of representation. Again, we are the borrower. The lender is Kenny Monk Savings Bank. I, we understand that the offices of Bozen and Associates, that's the uh, those are the attorneys representing Ken Bo, and who we wrote that check out to. I, we understand that the offices of Bozen and Associates PLLC are closing counsel for Kenny Bunk Savings Bank and that the obligations of Bozen and Associates PLLC to me are limited to document preparation and closing for this transaction. I understand that in the event I have any legal questions regarding this transaction, I should discuss them with independent counsel. I, we further understand and recognize that Bozen and Associates PLLC has its primary obligations to Kenny Buck Savings Bank in all aspects concerning this transaction and any future action regarding the enforcement of the terms and conditions of this loan transaction by Kenny Buck Savings Bank and successors and sides. So I guess what they're saying is don't bug us if you have a problem with anything. 
Right. Use your own kind of system. Yes. So that's what we'll do. So. Okay. Uh, Michael is moved. Second. Second. I have a second from Joni. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Let's see if there's anything else here. Settlement statement. We actually had that and signed it. So we could do that. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I think that completes, concludes the, the signing party of this evening. It right. okay, will recess and continue in the morning with our treasurer. All right. Um, okay, I'm, I'm back with Claire Gov. Now that we're not having to find our $30,000 or $15,000 or whatever, uh, I'm asking the board to consider again uh, subscribing to Claire Gov for, I think the, um, it is, I think the service contract is Yeah, yes, let me. Um, it's coming out of our, it's coming out of our IT line, which is funded by the Comcast line for purposes of open government. Uh, I have here our budget, which is $9,000. Uh, we had 2400 budgeted for Google Apps. We will be using 1800 because we don't have new users that we were anticipating. Computer support, uh, we have it is in executive, so it's up at the top somewhere. So 9,000 budgeted. Um, we have um, computer support budgeted at 3,000. We've used 807. Um, and so even with the projection of using another $790, which is another block of time for Lavelle, we would still have a BPA. We have a, a BBA of 2193 right now. Anticipated would be 790 if we had if we needed more hours. Our Comcast line is budgeted at 2160. We probably extended at 2278, and we have no miscellaneous expenses at the moment. This could be considered one. So the budget of nine thousand dollars we've expended 3,746 of it, leaving a, a BBA of $5,254, so which would cover the $2,750. So, so again, I mean, it's, it's, it's data, it's data that we, we're making available not only to ourselves, but to our residents and any member of the public for that matter. Um, it is, the price will go up next year. It will go up in, in June. So we can, of course, at, during budget prep, decide to try to fund it or not. If we decide to fund it, we still have until next June or July to get more feedback from people to see if we actually want to renew the contract. I'm trying it for you. Pardon? I'm okay with trying it for you. I don't recommend it right now. Okay. So, I like it, but we don't want to solve. Our self budget is accepted. So, understand. I understand. Yep. April storm, April 1st. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know that we had another set. Yes. Mm -hmm. This all fell in start until the end of April. So our salt budget is We want you to have to come back with a report for what It's next, over budget by $183. Uh, we still have our contingency. Uh, $16,202 minus what, what do you have? Is he citing contingency for? Or citing mowing? What was that month? So why don't we? What side mowing? Mm -hmm. The extra? So it's going to come mm -hmm. double the yeah. So why don't we let him work with Carol and prepare his report as to how much he anticipates he may need to come to. We have another week. No, I, I want to try it for a year. Uh, if we have the money on the line, and the purpose for the line is open government yes. and communications for the town, or part of the line, is, I'm okay with doing it, but why don't we just make sure we're not tying my hands. Okay, I mean, but but let me, okay. So that would be two weeks, but not meeting Yes, right. So she may say, okay, that's fine, but the price will be the full price because this is. Yeah. So. That's okay. All right, so I'll go and tell us. Thank you, I appreciate it. I understand. I mean, I, I, I understand. If he comes back, we're, I think the sixteen thousand dollars in contingency will help, but you know I don't want to. Finances are, you know, we should be. People should feel good about what they're voting for, not iffy. Or, so, so I'm fine with that. I just want us to know that we right. we may have we may have lost it. Well, in which case we can budget it. We can budget it for next year. Full price. Like mm -hmm. Two um, she give us an indication of what you tell uh, Yeah, she's given us a Leanna this week, really. Oh. Yeah. Talk about a hard sell. Yep. That's exactly town. what it is. Well, thanks. Yeah. Let me interest in your first. Uh, Thank you. Is it a two-week window? Well, I mean, you know, we she we talked in April, but I didn't. I wasn't prepared to listen or do anything. So June is when we have the then we have the two week window. We have two week window. Two week window. That's correct. Yes. I want, yes. Okay. I'm okay. I mean, you know, I I really like it. I really 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 would like it, but well, I'm not too, bored. But I'm so we'll happy to try it right now. There you go. Mm -hmm. so. This is patio furniture right now. Yeah, I don't see it quite that way, but I understand that you do, so yeah. and that's that. So re review legal priorities, not ready. One of these days, I did talk, Steve was in today. He had taken the day off, and I just happened to be here. So he is working on two issues. One, the planning board issue. Is that what happened? Actively. Pardon? Is that what happened? Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. I, I guess that is. I, I, I didn't see that. It wasn't there when Carol and I went, and I went through the budget. I didn't ask what you put on the one record. So all right, so it must I'm be. I'm assuming that, that must be a date that Steve is suggesting we get together at the board. Um, yes. Okay. So what he thought is that uh, okay, so 710 or 710, and that would just be the two of us, I think, because of the recusal. Yeah. So, yes, yeah. my, so I will say yes to that. I, 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 at the moment, I have them both open. So. Okay, I, I haven't checked mine, but I'll assume we know. So, so we'll say yes to that. Um, so those are the two that he's actively working what, on. What, what was the first one? I'm sorry. First one. Uh, 
So we'll break, yes, but if we have to, if, if, if Comcast is right. requiring us to renew, the, yeah. so that, but that's, we'll, we'll, we'll get that. So somewhere on here, well, it strikes my mind, it is a legal issue or potential. Um, we need to send a letter to the new occupant of the garage up the street. Mm -hmm. Joe's garage. So oh, not Paul's. Uh, not Paul's and someone, or wherever they live. The guy that took rent the space. Yeah, all these rents now complies with the, the site plan that we, that we agreed to for the location. It's not specific to the individual. So he's storing a boat up there, some sort of box truck, and, and okay. car for sale. So do we normally ask Tom to, to take care yeah. of the schools? All right, so we'll ask Tom to do this. Sorry, when well, we were up, up above, I, I don't know, I didn't think about that. I'm sorry. That's all right. No, no penalty points. Um, all right, so CIP, so I'm ready to sit with you whenever, Mike, to review the... Do I get back on vacation? Pardon? Do I get back on vacation? Just one. Okay. 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 Back on the something to just say we're on board with with, the, with this and I haven't somebody else wants to look at it that's fine I, I have it on my list to look at to see what it is where we need to sign off on what it means but um, I seen that just yet. all right we dealt with F right I think so okay uh, Eversource oh yeah video regarding aggressive marketers I said you know we didn't have time to look at this video this is it going once going twice I think I'm going to take it so we just won't Manage that. You're good with, with not putting it up, or you're good with yeah, it? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's fine. I haven't looked at it, so uh, Jody, you're fine with our not putting it up. A new hope housing tax exemption status letter. Caroline knows it's on her list to do. Hydro sale of lease, the authorization letter. Now, this was in our quarter last week. Michael reminded us that we had not heard definitively regarding the licensing process and he was managing that. So we got back to Kevin yep. and he said he now is going to continue to manage the real licensing Fine. under the same terms that we had before. So given that, uh, there's an authorization letter in there that the board uh, may, may want to consider. Three mile power subsidiary, you know. I don't really know. <laughs> yeah, I think that's true. Consolidated Hydro New Hampshire. And it's, the next line is email green power. I don't know. Well, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Just get there. I'm managing it. There's yes, yes. Right there. So, so it is in reference to the lease, and it says that Consolidated Hydro of New Hampshire has entered into an agreement to sell the project to Green Mountain Power, and the lease will be assigned to them contemporaneously. Um, blah blah blah. Um, and Kevin said yes. He was. And recommended that we go ahead and sign it. So it's going to require all of us, the entire governing board. So I will be signing it and then passing it on to my colleagues to see if they are ready to sign it as well.
So Rick committee, we talked about staffing and you want a topic for non-public, correct? Yeah, non-public, yeah. a bunch of budget stuff. Uh, not uh, first that when we get to folder. Um, how are we going to do folder work? Is that okay? Okay. So the rest of the other few things have customarily been table historical committee. I'm not seeing copies. I don't want to meet with, uh, with, with them again and um, with the uh, statutes. Uh, Caroline had a conversation with so I want to okay. go through all that again before we think about it. Uh, central stores table. Uh, policies and procedures will be table. All right. Uh, standing items. Michael. Norm, I'm going for a site walk. A planning board uh, up on Greenview Drive to look at um, potential site for the Store so what? So Greenview is on this side of the road. What side of the road is this potential? Store? So you're driving down Greenview. It's on the left-hand side. So what's currently wooded? Uh, Partially field. Yeah. Okay. So you won't be able to see it from Rawls. From Rawls. Oh. Mm -hmm. You may be able to see the very top of it from Main Street, but we're we're looking at quite. Well, how many, uh, how, how large is the lot that they're thinking of developing? Large. Mm -hmm. Staring off with it, my mystical chart is over there. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just curious. I can bring you a picture. I can go get well, it. No, no, no. It's, a, it, it's not. No, I'm fine. It's just a uh, And the uh, police um, uh, space needs for. Out there in the public now, we've gone on a tour. It's been confirmed for July uh, 20th up in front of it. Oh, yes, yeah, so the, the, the concrete building. Okay, excellent. Uh, Jody? Uh, I think we're busy with the rack. <laughs> That's the one we're busy with. Putting it together Sunday and starting today. It's great, it's very exciting. So. And there's a waiting list? There is a waiting list. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Um, so, let's see. Um, I forgot last week to tell you that it was the SRPC annual meeting. And uh, the panelists were talking about historic preservation. And yes, um, I can do this. Don't give me a hint. Celia. <laughs> oh. Celia was there representing the historic people. Yes. So maybe during community input, you can give us a little synopsis of what you think was, was helpful when we get to that, okay? Um, <coughs> so I don't have, so this week what I'm doing is trying to get this whole bond thing uh, sorted out and completed and that sort of thing. Um, all right. Um, so that is activities and updates. So we're ready for building permits. Okay. All right. Light them, right? Let's see. I have two numbers. First is permit number 2017-067-503 Main Street. They had a new roof put on. The fee is $185. Next is permit number 2017-075-130 Roberts Road. They are installing a security light. Security. Uh, security light on their barn. That's a review by Mr. Clark. It's a $90 fee. Right. I will read this whole thing. This is 
firm or tax collector. I voted the select board upon the application of Christopher Ferris. Address of an Eben. And we have abated the principal amount of $2,591 on June 26, 2016. Our property located at 216 Summersworth Road, Map 2, Lot 21. For tax year 2016. Cause of abatement, Prince Repair submitted a demolition permit in 2015 for removal of the dwelling on Map 2 21-0. The demolition permit was approved by the Board of Selectmen and the dwelling was demolished in November of 2015 for Mr. Ferris. Avatar did not remove the dwelling from assessing until 2017. When Mr. Ferris was billed for taxes in 2016 for a dwelling that no longer existed which had an assessed value in 2016 of $92,600. That's a formula that comes up. As for this, as, as of this date, Mr. Ferris has not paid the 2016 taxes, so he's not entitled to interest. Accordingly, tax collector is instructed to process a beginning balance abatement in the amount of $2,591 on MAP 2-21-0. That is for the select board to sign. So this is the issue that we gave a verbal okay to, I think, for the tax collector to proceed, yeah. pending the, the, the verification of the building permit. Yeah. So Andrea researched it. The man did, in fact, get a building permit. Mm -hmm. so, I remember coming in late with it, but he still had one. Uh, it wasn't a penny list. But, so, I would move that we, uh, in the amount of two thousand five hundred ninety-one dollars for tax year twenty sixteen. So that's a second. I think he moved it. Oh. Second. Good. Any discussion? No one in favor say aye. 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 We'll all be signing it anyway. Different reasons, but still going along there. That's it, Frank. Over. Got off light tonight. signature from one of the board pending a, an interview and a, a, a positive recommendation from the rec committee. Right. So, That's fine. Uh -huh. so, moved. so moved by Michael. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So that was an email. All right. I've got two. I don't know. So, Maybe. I, I won't say I no. Won't I say no. We get a lot. So all right, so let's we'll okay. keep that uh, authorized. We're board members authorized to sign. Did you forward to anything? I don't know. I'm gonna say I don't know. I don't we know. get so many. Yeah, I know. I don't know. Okay. So I'll move that we sign the building permit. Second. Second. Explain Doodlebugs 
Yes, we have a $600 grant that has come in from Rollins for the Education Fund. That will cover Doodlebug Studios coming in and doing one project for 60 kids. However, we have 75 kids registered for the camp. We have decided as a committee not to charge any of our campers for in-house activities that we bring in because some of them may not be able to afford it and we don't want anybody to miss out. Therefore, Doodlebugs has requested as their usual procedure um, half up front. They understand that our grant covers more than half of the kids, so they're asking us instead to just cover the 15 kids that are not covered in the grant so that they can order the necessary supplies. So well, let, let's move in and I'll ask some questions. Okay. So this one is a first order. I think they're the same thing. Caroline said there were two. I think she did one and I think you came in with one. So I think we, we only need, we can pick, we just need to pick one. Okay. We'll, we'll avoid the other one. Okay, so move to accept purchase order 1289 to do the bugs for 15 people, um, 15 students for $150. Okay, okay. Uh, so discussion. I have, I have a question. So is the Rollinsford Education, oh, sorry, what's the name? Foundation. Rollinsford Education Foundation. Is their donation grant coming to us? It's going directly to Doodle Bucks. All right, so it's not running through the town books. But we did put in our budget $2,500, $2,500 in grant money. And we expended the same amount in grant money in the rec budget. Well, this is, I, 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 don't, I don't think I'm quite followed, because this isn't grant money. This is going to be an actual, this is an actual expense, because you don't have grant money to cover it. Right. right, but we do have donations that would cover it. We have $500 in donations yet to be expended that are for activities, which we And they're being that. deposited to our general fund? To, I believe so. The funds have gone to Caroline to be deposited. Yeah, they must, must go into the general yeah, fund. I don't know where else they would go. All of the registration money, yeah. anything that so yeah, we have $500 in donations that came in for activities, and then we have roughly $400 as of noon today that came in for t-shirts between the campers and the community shirts. So we just want to see the budget. We have roughly $900 that has come into the town on behalf of the rec committee. So, so we have an aggregated total for summer record, 37941 Um How do we think we're, we're doing on that? Do you know? With staffing, we, were, we didn't have the numbers to cover, and now we don't have the staff to cover kids. So we're probably going to be close to even. So. Which okay. is exactly what we're supposed to do. Yeah. So. Okay. Final 50. Yes. Right. Oh, that's right. Thank you. All right. Any other questions or comments? I will call a question. All those in favor of purchase order 1298 to Doodlebox. Signify by saying aye. Aye. So, and let's avoid, avoid the envelope, please. Okay, we're all set. Thank okay. you. Okay, so this is some setup stuff. Uh, one's to me, one's to Brittany, and one's to Andy. So, Andy bought. You mean reimbursements? Yes. So um, there's three head counselors, one for each group, and then they have um, co co counselors, mm -hmm. or second level counselors. There's a head counselor for each age group, and each head counselor carries a backpack, and in the backpack has a first aid kit, um, a clipboard with everybody in, in their group mm -hmm. information, 
what it was. Mm -hmm. um, so the three backpacks to Walmart. Um, this is purchase order one two five zero to Andrew Gray um, for three backpacks for fifty six dollars and ninety one cents. So, so I have a question. Do we think these backpacks are going to extend beyond one season? Yeah. I don't know. They're going to lakes, they're going to beaches, they're going to... Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it may be a... Uh, it's best. a Yes, yeah. yeah. All right. So. Okay. I don't know. Depends on who carries the backpack and what group they're in. Yeah. If Just they're part of the one, two, three group, I doubt. It's $56 mm -hmm. for three backpacks. I wouldn't count on the last thing I'll Yeah, okay. I don't think they're the highest. Yeah. For the buying for the purpose, right? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't count on the, the like, longevity. Like, so there's a lot of backpacks left. Well, the year maybe. Right. Like, so all right, good enough. I'm ready to call the question. Ninety-one cents. I'm ready to call the question. All those in favor of the purchase order, signify by saying aye. 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 And it's a reimbursement to our director. to um, the camp, it's only for the camp. Um, one of the assistant or the director has it on them at all times. Um, so if you better take it in late or, and it happened today. Um, somebody wasn't gonna be able to get in in time and they wanted to get the walk home. They said no, it's not the rules anymore. So they found a way to pick them up. Mm -hmm. um, there's also an email that goes directly to Andy and Brittany only, um, it's camperallydirectors at gmail.com. He, he didn't, he realized that he was getting inundated with emails. So parents can email them anytime. Okay. So, so is that, every is parent that got our, something that's like that's our Google, Is that our, one of our Google emails? No, they just have a credit to Gmail for themselves. So. Okay. So, just wanted you to know that. Next so, year we may choose to put them on our town just because it's um, it's, um, it's backed up, it's a town entity, you know, it's um, it's subpoenable if we need to do you want very liable. Uh, you no, know, it's already done. Not, it's already done. I mean we, let's not go crazy. But have you so this is I'm sorry, this is that one you're that one side. Okay. So did you check the receipts on that and they, they all they match up on this? Yes. This one, this one and this one? Yeah. Yes. So this was just um, so she bought a track phone card. Um, and I thought I had a track phone usable, but it didn't have a SIM card in it. Um, I'll get to that later. Mm -hmm. um, first day, 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 and clipboards. So um, purchase order 1299 to Brittany Powers for $51.95. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 order to myself. Um, it was for stakes for the ground for the um, easy up. So we have one easy up that was donated. Pop ups? Mean? Yeah. Tents? Yeah. So one was donated, Not one tents, we found in the shed. Um, okay. Uh, it's a little beat up, but it's doing Doable. its job. Yeah. And um, one I donated that okay. for my kids. It's Not new, but it's fair yeah. for them. So, and then I had to go out and get the card and the prepayments actually the card. So it has a, you know, like 300 or 400 minutes on it right now. Um, for uh, miscellaneous items, uh, for a total of $70.86. So 
the easy apps go in and out every day. Two of them go in and out every day. Um, the one that's seeing better days is stayed down. Okay. And we bring it down. But if you undo the very top, it may not go back in. I'm like, well, let's use it till it breaks. That's a good plan. I'm going to go to number one, two, five, one. Reimbursement to show you the work times for miscellaneous receipts for the summer rent for a total of set, a total amount of seventy dollars and eighty six cents. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Oh, yeah, Caroline has a double letter, but she, she knows she has to, so yes. There should be a second one, I think. One to Megan and one to. I don't know. I don't know. But at the same time. Oh, Phipps. Um, uh, no. Phipps. That's a Turgeon Lane, I There should be two. But that's not the letter. It's This is just that's the avatar. The, uh, avatar. Yeah. The recommendation of that. So. Well, Caroline has not yet written the letter, but there are okay. two for her to write. One is for Phipps and one is for. Okay, so she signed one of them. Yeah, she, she, yeah she, she needs to write the letter and hasn't done that. Okay. All right, so Towns and Energy, working on that with Caroline. Oh, is this the oil for next year? Yeah. Okay, so you're working on that? Yeah, thank you. So, um, purchase to order 1276 to Green Shadow um, property maintenance for the fourth Boeing of the year in New and Old Town uh, Cemetery for 1000 one, $1,345. Any discussion? I want to say aye. 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 Are you okay with this? Yeah, I'll make some stuff. We need to accept purchase order 1277, Green Shadow Truck Maintenance, for the fifth moment. That was quick. Yeah. I hope they did the same day. Is there an invoice from Green Shadows? No. We just did this. Yeah, we did in the. Yeah. We just signed them last week. Do we want to. Maybe we want to encourage the cemetery trustees to put a date of mowing or include the invoice? Maybe the invoice would be helpful. Yeah. Could you? We've signed one, so that's good. But Perhaps you could if you advise them to. Yeah. They usually have a date on them. Mode on. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then DRA uh, sent us a lovely letter. Uh, 2017 reevaluation monitoring of sales. That gentleman. Is this Lionel? Is this Lionel? Yeah. Okay, Do you want it? 
No, he's our he's the person who is overseeing the um, the audit, the D, the audit so of he would have the car. Yeah, or oversaw that. Yeah, he's the he got, he actually I think he actually goes out. Yeah, he's assigned to manage it. But how much he actually does, I don't know. But it's part of the department duty under RSA. Bye. I'm forwarding the final results of my monitoring activity and sales of inspection. Close will by my EA45 monitoring report. Note only property record cards with points have been included. We don't actually know him. He's just well, right. been we our just rep for a while. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't know him. I could walk in, I would yes. know him. I, I, now, I now recognize him. Oh, you know what he looks like? Yeah, I do. Like yeah. Yeah. Carol, Carol, the name for Carol. Uh, yeah. yeah, he yeah. comes in. He comes in every once in a while, checks yeah. in. He was the one, he came in early in the fall to say, you know, you're going to have to do audits, of your, you're going to have to re, you know, confirm your elderly exemptions and veterans credits. Oh, yeah. So he's he's part of that regulatory piece of, of DRA. So are they finding anything? Or? Yes. Sketch does not show left front wall of garage overlapping sections causing an inaccurate measurement. Air conditioner listed as no, found to be yes. Note to assessor on day of inspection at Carpenter was not was working on interior work. Um, well, I wouldn't mind looking at that. Is this just an FYI to us or well, do anything? Uh, this looks like an FYI, but I, I think it goes it. right into the list of yeah. why we need to meet with that Driveway listed as paved. Noted to be gravel. Insufficient notes regarding condition adjustment and landline of 5%. What does that mean? We don't have, I met with them last week, at, at, which is my note to either put it on the agenda for next week to tell you or tell you about it this week. But You should tell us about it. So I met with. Uh, Chad and Jonathan and Caroline and Andrea. Mm -hmm. And they uh, they apologized for what in fact was a, uh, a bad process decision. And they had, in, in getting ready for the reveal, they had taken a copy of our assessment system, you know, brought it to their, their headquarters, and frozen us out of this one, and, but at some point they reinstated that system so that Andrea could do ownership changes, this is the stuff that she's supposed to do, and when changes were given to Avatar, they needed to be made in both versions, having two versions is always fraught. Bad idea. Bad idea, and they admitted that it was a bad idea. That was the source of the, the problems that they had uh, most recently, and what caused them to write those supplemental letters. So, some of the other issues I think were probably, um, I would say, you know, things about assessing that we're not as aware of. So, for example, you know, the fact that someone may have spent a lot of money to redo a barn, if the barn is really far away from the main house, it may not have added that much to the housing value of, that, of the overall property. You know, what you pay for a additional work doesn't necessarily increase your value by that much. So that was uh, something they said for that. And, you know, other times when something is in transition, like they're not done, you, you can choose either to, um, I'm going to forget the either or, but they turn out to be sort of equivalent. And so they chose one and then dangerous as well. Okay, yes, I see that. 